Irate locals and frustrated fishery officers join forces in Operation Foreshore. If I see you around here again, I'll be really pissed off. It's all hands on deck as police try to find a downed helicopter. See the smoke from the fire, which was the reason the helicopter was out here. And fishery officers throw the book at a commercial skipper. You might get a kick up the big sort for the sake. 20 kilometres southeast of Wellington, fishery officer Julian and his crew are on a hunt for poachers at Turakide Heads as part of Operation Foreshore. Officers stationed around the coast road are watching activity on the beaches popular with power poachers, and if they see any suspicious activity, are relaying the information back to Julian. The main objective of Operation Foreshore is to target uh, repeat offenders who are uh, taking excess power and undersized power. Uh, good fine weather will mean there will be a lot of people out on the coastline, um, so we can expect to be busy. And it's not long before the surveillance team alert Julian to a group of divers acting suspiciously on the beach. We've just had three vehicles move around the coastline of uh, uh, the area, operational area, and uh, we're just going to carry out a uh, check and see what they've got. Oh, them again. Hello, this too. The group are locals well known to fishery officers. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The officers spread out to check the multiple vehicles for any possible illegal catch. I didn't recognise you yesterday. They start off giving the divers the benefit of the doubt and maintain a friendly manner. What's that um, access like around there? On the, on the, truck. the surveillance officer in the hills has radioed down more information. Come with me. It's all right. Is this your truck here? No, I'm not the driver. Come with me. Who's the driver? You. You are. As the first vehicles were checked by the fishery officers, the last vehicle stopped out of sight and a large sack was offloaded into the bushes. Stop here with the driver. Okay, so where, where did you stop? Over here. Over here. Could this large sack of power be what they're looking for? In Northland, the Maritime Police and the Police National Dive Squad have been called to an emergency near the Karikari Peninsula. A chopper involved in fighting a bushfire ravaging the area is believed to have gone down somewhere along the coast nearby. We've been given a position that was a, taken by a fishing boat that located the helicopter. I could see it under the water after uh, noticing there was an oil slick on the surface. And what we've done is just put it on the chart to allow us to locate the position easily. The fishing boat was meant to have left buoys to mark the crash site, but there's a problem. They can't have put any buys out. They might have gone washed away or something. I don't know, but they're definitely not here. They're over the site. Without the boys, the maritime police will have to rely on their state-of-the-art sonar equipment to locate the chopper. So what we're looking at at the bottom is the sandy bottom, a little bit wavy, as you'd expect in an area like this. Yeah, they're clear as There you go. On the screen appears an object that could be the remains of the crashed helicopter, and the police national dive squad swing into action. Just going down, just uh, to see exactly what we've got down there. Lead diver Bevan's tasked with identifying the object. Through the murky depths comes the first signs of a potential wreckage. In the Bay of Islands, the crew of the Navy vessel HMNZS Pukaki has teamed up with fishery officers Lance and Henry for an operation checking commercial and recreational fishing boats. And the first boat the patrol comes across, the size of the catch is something to be seen. Fishery, have you been down for a fish? I'm alongside. 300 kg mullet. Check this blue out, mate. Oh, my word. <laughs> that is a big fish. Yep. How long did it take? Six hours. You be here today? Oh, him, him. He did four hours and I did two. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> and we've got one car warrior in case you want to be sure. 
<laughs> oh, I would have thrown the car all the way back. <laughs> Mate. We might do that yet. <laughs> oh, good on you. Nice fish. You don't see that happen too, much, too often. They're there, they're absolutely buzzing. Not a very big boat. Good on them. As the day wears on, the weather begins to clear, and Lance has a sight set on a launch that looks like it's been fishing. Go forward, go forward. But the driver has no intention of stopping for an inspection. Finally, after some evasive manoeuvres from the fishery officers, the boat pulls up. Get away, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm just doing the fisheries and uh, navy patrol. Sorry? Just doing the fisheries and navy patrol. We just, we just, we just needed you to stop so I could have a quick word. Uh, have you been fishing at all? Or? I've got one car wire. Have you got one car wire on board? Sorry? I don't give you jurisdiction on the board. You know, I'm a fishery officer that way. You understand that? I understand. But the Australian boat owner isn't about to be boarded. I have the authority to board the vessel. Come on, I'll board with you. Will you approve it or not? Uh, he believes that we're not allowed to hop onto his boat to inspect him. And um, under the Fisheries Act, we clearly are. We presented our warrants to him, so he was, he was aware that we were fishery officers. Once we do that, we, we have all the powers of a fishery officer, even though he's challenged us. Am I under arrest? No, not at all. Yeah, all the way. Read it. Read it. Please read it. Bust to me. I'll, I'll read it. Come on. Talk to him, my friend. Just couldn't it be quiet until you read that, please? And the main thing is it's called a Victoria Melbourne, so it's got no standing here at all. New Zealand court cases. Well, he presented some uh, straight and legal documents to us. Well, on the face of it, I disagree with it without legal uh, advice. Um, but I know our powers that allow us to do um, inspect this vessel. At Wellington's Turakide Heads, fishery officers have pulled over a number of vehicles returning from gathering power after receiving intel from a surveillance team. And they believe they have caught one group red-handed. Three vehicles that uh, came around the coastline were stopped by fishery officers. It appears that one of the vehicles dropped a bag of power before arriving um, to the gate where they were going to be inspected. That was a new one, wasn't it? Okay. I'm asking the question. Well, wouldn't it have been a two? Okay. Did you see me hop out of my truck and put it there? Someone did. Oh, well, someone did. There are so many power in the sack, it's almost bursting at the seams. Do you want to get details? As Julian counts the catch, officers question the man they believe to be the ringleader. We chucked by. Oh, okay, okay. But he's denying any wrongdoing. Well, if you saw it stop at the bottom of the hill, you would have seen. No, well, she would have seen someone jump out the bottom. It would make sense, mate. She no, saw. You're she saw. I'm going to ask you the questions, okay? You've got a right to answer those questions at that time. Okay? But the evidence is pretty damning. Sam, have you got a count? 47. 47. 47 power is just over the daily quota of 10 power each for four divers. But it appears none of the passengers are prepared to claim responsibility for any of the catch. I mean, the thing is, I think there's only about 46 power. If you guys got 10 power each, why go to the trouble? Julian tries once again to give the man the opportunity to admit to some of the catch. Off Karikari Peninsula, Maritime Police and the Police National Dive Squad have located the wreckage of a missing helicopter. There are no survivors. The job is now to find out how and why this accident happened. You see the smoke from the fire, which was the reason the helicopter was out here. So hopefully the fire was accidental. If it was lit deliberately, then it's directly caused the death of two people. So we hope it's not that situation. But there is little time to reflect, as the divers must now gather evidence that will form the backbone of any future investigation. When you're inside there, trying to take some photos all the controls, make sure you don't bump anything, so some general shots first. I mean, then go and take the deceased any instruments at the same time as you can. There's a headset loose on the other side, on the starboard side. And those pictures just going back, and you'll see those coming yeah. in the front. As much detail as you can. Underneath there, there's a bit of um, stuff that's come off. There's a lot of photographs in through there, and the rear panel's a bit of um, 
damage in through there. So just generals as best you can onto the deceased, everything in and around there. Collecting the photographic evidence is a long and exacting process for the divers. It could become way as yet here, Dodd. I'll start splitting teams up because otherwise they start getting very high or not. Um, yep. So, yep. Everything must be documented before the wreckage is salvaged. It's very methodical. We've got to do it properly. You only get one chance to do it. So um, you don't want to, uh, you can't go back and, uh, and redo the evidence, if you like. So it's got to be done right first time. By late afternoon, police have spent several hours at the helicopter crash site. The divers have now collected numerous images of the wreckage. But with the photographic work complete, the police must now prepare for the sombre end to their assignment. Divers uh, are going to go over now and recover people that uh, have been caught in the helicopter. In the Bay of Islands, fishery officers are on a joint operation with the Navy and have come across an Australian boatie who's not happy about being boarded. It's not wrong. We had no intention. We had no intention. Stop me. That is arresting. No, no, no. It's not actually. It's the car to stop and inspect. Stop. How to stop and inspect. We haven't a danger at all. All I want to do is, have you got, if you've got any fish on board, which is asking you, can do nothing without my consent. I've got the authority to ask you questions as well. I'll just inspect this boat. I'm only inspecting it, I'm not searching it, okay? I'm only inspecting your boat, I'm not searching it. After a quick look in the boat's holding tanks, turns out the only problem on board is the skipper's attitude. Please read that. Oh, I don't need to, mate. Oh, I don't need to. No. No, you need to get in touch with New Zealand law, okay? Because that's Australian law, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're in New Zealand now, that day. New Zealand Fisheries Waters? I'm not in New Zealand. You're in your zone fisheries waters? You're in your zone fisheries waters? Right now? No, See that? You're, you're yeah, you are. I can tell you that. I am not in, I'm on. Then no, I'm the same thing. That's semantics, that's semantics, mate. While Australia has a reputation for claiming Kiwi icons, it appears our friend may be lost, as the Bay of Islands is definitely in New Zealand waters. Although there was a bit of fuss made, we'll let him get on with his day. He's probably not going to be happy, but can't win all. As the patrol continues, they come across a commercial boat and decide to check if it's fishing by the book. Knock, knock. G'day, mate, how are you? Good morning. You guys been busy? You been doing much? Exactly. Where we just started? Oh, yeah, yeah. You got fish in the hole, though? Yeah. Can I have a look at it? Yeah. Oh, so I'll do the old books as normal and... Uh... Marcel, do the books. The rules for commercial fishing are simple. The skipper needs to keep his records up to date, and all shots or single trawls of a commercial net must be recorded. So I've got a half a wedge belly there, got a snapper actually there that's fixed. Tear it deep in and net. And we haven't put that shot away because it wasn't worth coming down for. Normally we'll come straight down and put it away. Oh, okay. Uh, How much do you reckon you got in there? About three bones. Yeah, I'll everything. Henry scrambles over the ice to check the bins at the back. I see you got some shark too. Four sharks or something like that, is there? No, no, they're just sitting on the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they get dropped down the hatches. I've done a visual inspection of the hold. So now what we need to do is reconcile it to the actual bookwork and the two should technically balance there or thereabouts. But topside, there's a problem with the paperwork. He has forgotten to put in the last shot. On the Karikari Peninsula, at the end of a long day at the helicopter crash site, police are recovering the bodies of the two men who died. The issues we have are um, obviously the safety of the divers, but also recovering them out of the water. So we're going to use our um, lifting gear, and as soon as uh, the divers bring somebody to the surface, we'll bring them on board. The divers carefully extricate the pilot and passenger from the mangled helicopter. Operations such as these are bittersweet for the officers. It will be classified as a successful operation. 
However, when lives are lost, especially in the line of duty, there's little to celebrate. We do it with uh, one purpose in mind, and that's actually to recover the people who have been lost. And we do that for their family, for the people that uh, are now ashore meeting our boat uh, with their loved ones. In the Bay of Islands, fishery officers Henry and Lance have boarded a commercial fishing vessel and found they haven't kept their records up to date. He has forgotten to put in the last shot. As a commercial uh, trawler, he's required to fill in uh, information after a shot, which is obviously one trawl of his net, and he finished that. This is his second shot for the day about two and a half hours ago. Um, and he's now conducting his third shot, and hasn't tallied up that fish and put it into his books. You might get a kick up the back sort for the same. All right. Sort of tell you up front because I don't know how many times we've told the commercial fleet that they've got to do this. You will see us again, so my advice is make sure your fish is up to date. Next time we get on, I bet you it'll be perfect, eh? The permit holder received a written warning for not completing his trawl catch return. At Turakire Heads, Wellington. Fishery officers are trying to get to the bottom of who has taken the 47 power found in a sack. Thing is, someone, we had our people up here watching, eh? That's the fact of the matter. I dumped out of the water and they were leaving, so I just dumped them. Okay, that's what we'll just start, what we'll do, just to have a look at um, your guys' um, mate over there. So far, nobody is claiming the catch, but fishery officers believe they have their man and question him further. We believe that their power was associated to the vehicle that uh, was stopped and um, have interviewed the occupants of the vehicle and one of the occupants has admitted that the power was his. Because it was over the uh, three times um, daily limit, uh, more than likely that will be a prosecution. Realising that the whole group could be individually fined for the offence, the driver of the car claims the catch. He was convicted of having excess power, ordered to forfeit all his dive gear and sentenced to 75 hours community service. Further around the coast, one of the surveillance officers has reported seeing three divers who may have more than their quota of power. So the ground team move in. One of the divers has done a runner. Two of the suspected poachers have been apprehended at their vehicle. And as Julian and his team turn up, the diver who took off decides to return to the scene. There were more than 130 power in the bag. You said, yep, you guys had a plan and you were going to throw the sack if you saw fisheries. You said, yep, yep. The three men are allowed 10 power each. The total haul is 131. Such a blatant disregard for the law prompts a member of the public to give the group a piece of his mind. I'm really pissed off you guys. And I hear it's about the second or third time you've, um, you've done it. If I see you around here again, I'll be really pissed off. Really pissed off. You don't need to do that, eh? If you don't want to have a feed for tomorrow, then don't bother coming here, eh? Well, it's supposed to be there forever or not for you, bloody lot. Right? I mean it, too. Things go from bad to worse for the poachers. Not only are the group well in excess of their limit of 10 power each, the majority of the catch is well undersized. Who took a shell for power? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So how many of the power that were in the white sack uh, do you think you collected? About 15 or 16. All three were convicted of excess and undersized power. They were fined between $500 and $2,500 each, and one of the three served 50 hours community service.